Okay, so we're in the workshop today. We've just unloaded the monster truck out of the trailer. Um, so we're gonna do some work on it this week. Um, got some brake discs to change. Got a couple of, uh, got one warp brake disc. So I've got to fix that. Got a, uh, uh, some loose bolts on the engine that keep coming loose. So we're gonna work on that. Um, yeah, um, Kelvin's gonna come back to, to shrink around those last rivets on, on the trailer. Um, to unload the monster truck, we have to take the big tires out. So I'm just gonna push all them back in a minute. So the two go in, they go all the way up to the roof. So in the back of my trailer, if I wait, take a walk up here. So we're in the, in the back of the trailer. So this is what the trailer's like when the monster truck's out. So I use all these, these um, tops, of, tops of lids. They catch oil, but we also use them at shows. So if we're working on the monster truck at the show, so we've got the planetaries off, we can actually put the planetaries into the tops of those containers so it doesn't get any grit or anything inside them. So yeah, so this is what winches up the, the tires there. So they go all the way up to the roof and they go actually in this in this cradle that's on the floor. So when the monster truck, the tires are in, they're not actually hanging on the chains. There's actually bits welded in the side of the trailer for the support arms to go in so that it's not holding on there. But it also actually makes another square in the back of the trailer because it ties the two sides of the trailer together. Now in my trailer, what you probably don't know is there's a door in the roof. The door in the roof actually goes up to the viewing balcony on the top. So my trailer is actually strong enough that, you can, that people can stand on the top of it. So at some of the vents, I put all the barriers. All the barriers are already up there on the roof. They, they're only one inch thick when they're laid down, but they all pop up. So we haven't, we're not carrying bits and bobs up and down all the time in there. So that's how you get onto the roof. So the roof actually, on just on steel plates on the loan, because it's steel checker plated up on the top, weighs one and a half tons of roof. So my whole trailer is about 19 tons empty. Okay, so as I was explaining, those are the two tires that've gone up first. And if you've noticed, there's the, the, the arms actually underneath them. So there's the arms actually support the, the, the frame when it's up in the air, so it's not hanging on the cables on the winches. And that's what it looks like when you put the other set of two tires underneath it. So as you can see, there isn't a lot, a lot of room left in the back of it. It's quite funny when you come through customs and they ask, can we have a look in the back of the lorry? And I said, it's just tires you can see. You actually see more from the front. Yeah, so open up the back doors and you're like, yep, yeah, it's just tires. So I was talking about earlier about the viewing balcony on the roof of my trailer. So there it is all laid flat. It's one inch tall when it's flat. So yeah, it doesn't take up any room. Just go up through the hatch, which is there. The two sides come up and then it all bolts together up on the roof. Okay, so everything is now back in the workshop. My workshop's actually big enough that I can actually leave my Scania tractor unit on the front of the trailer and still close the doors. So now we can get to work on the monster truck. Okay, so we're in the workshop and one of the first things we do every time we come into the workshop after we bid to a show is give the monster truck an oil change. This engine runs on methanol, so it doesn't run on petrol, it doesn't run on diesel, it runs on methanol, which is a biofuel. The only problem is it does contaminate oil. If you've got any leakage in the inside the engine, it will contaminate the oil. So we use a 2050 Lucas Oil. Lucas Oils are absolutely brilliant. Um, they're one of our biggest sponsors. So they help us out no end. So if you're gonna buy some oil and you wanna help us out, please buy Lucas Oil, because Lucas Oils help us out. So, got the spanner. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you how I do this and film at the same time. I haven't tried this yet. So just put the spanner on. And it's fairly tight. Don't want to, don't want to lose the oil. So when we're, when we're undoing the, the bolt underneath here, we're actually pressing up all the time. So we're pressing up on the bolt. So as we was coming down, it's, it's quite a long thread on this. It's actually got a needle and a, and a big um, a spread washer underneath it. And if you notice it in the bottom of the, where we're gonna catch the oil, that is completely clean. So we, when we drop the oil, we want to see if there's any debris in there. So we've cleaned everything first before we start draining the oil. So now, Wearing gloves, because I still got a little bit on me, not a lot. And as you can see now, the oil is draining through. So we we put this big funnel in there so it doesn't get oil all over our prop shaft and our prop shaft guards. 
and then we're catching the oil in the bottom. And then we inspect the oil afterwards to see if there's any parts, any bits of metal in there or any other things that shouldn't be in there. As you can see, the oil is fairly clean coming out. This engine only has only got about 20 hours on it at the moment. So we normally get about 100 hours before we have to rebuild the engine. You can still see, soon see when the engine is getting tired, you actually see more contamination in the oil, so the oil looks more milky looking. Um, the oil um, never goes like a, like a diesel car where it goes completely black. We don't get any carbon, it's carbon free. So you don't get any carbon in the oil. So yeah. Okay, so while we're waiting for that oil to drain, why don't we catch up some of the other action that happened at Festival of the Power at Santa Pod over the last weekend. So here I'm now over with Gary with the Mini Monster Trucks, where people can experience what it's like to drive a monster truck. So what's just coming in now, we got Podzilla. And this, this girl has been driving it like a true monster truck driver. So I'm just gonna stand right by the side of her now. Stand up, I'm gonna stay there. Go careful when you come up. Just stand up. All right, you said. Do you do thumbs up? Put your thumb out. And there she is. Future monster truck driver in the making. Yeah. <laughs> so all the little kids are having great fun driving the mini monster trucks. What you might not know, I actually built all the bodies for all the monster trucks. When I do the fiberglass, in, I actually made all the bodies for Gary and the team. And I must admit, they do a cracking job. The kids absolutely love driving these monster trucks. So if you're ever at a show and you want your kids want to have a go, just look out for Mini Monster Truck Mania and see Gary and the team and the kids will have a, the time of their life. Okay, so I don't just drive the monster truck in every night, it's also get to drive the boat sweep. But look, we've got two steering wheels. You can drive it on the left or the right. Um, I'm driving it on the left because it's actually easier when we're driving it in the arena. So what we're doing, why we sweep the arena? Well, there's lots of tire rubber that comes off, especially Terry's cars. Um, so, you know, you've got the Nissan Duke, 350Z, and the Legend is tucked in between the two monster trucks there. So yeah, so he shreds a lot of tires. Yesterday in one of the shows, he exploded one of them really, really loud. I actually thought the car had let go, but it was actually one of the tires exploding. So yes, yeah, so we have to sweep up all the rubber and also all the bits that come off the stack cars. So what we're going to do in a minute, so I'm just sweeping the rubber up first, and then I'm going to get the forklift out, and we're actually going to set a brand new set of stack cars in. So the arena isn't that smooth in places. Um, yes, no, the, uh, yes, the reason why we're sweeping it up is because Herb comes out in the jet car and, we, and there's so much air that comes out the back of it we don't want it blowing um, bits of tyre, bits of cars or into the crowd or even sucking it up into the engine you've got that, that massive guard on the front of it but we still don't want anything because it sucks up so much air so we're just sweeping the arena people are starting to come in now they're starting to line up on the bank it's just got half eight in the morning and it's going to be a beautiful day here at Santa Prod Raceway Okay, so we're working on the back of the engine. Now, when we was at the Festival of Power, I did have a slight issue in the monster truck. Didn't stop us doing a show, but I did have a slight oil leak coming from the back of my timing cover. Now on the timing cover on this, this is a, it's a big push rod engine. Um, and normally on a push rod engine, you would have a timing chain, but this one is a high revving, high horsepower engine. So we actually got timing gears. Um, so behind that, where the cover is, um, you do get a slight vibration because they're straight cut gears. Now, I put in stainless steel bolts, and stainless steel, I've talked to quite a few other people, isn't the best option for that, for in this particular application. So what happens is the um, stainless expands at a slightly different ratio than a steel bolt, and it will expand a bit quicker and a bit looser. Um, so what happens is it, once it comes loose, because it's got a little bit of vibration behind there because of those straight cut gears, it will come undone, and that's why we're getting the oil leak. So, what we're going to do now, I'm going to have just taken most of them out. I haven't taken them all out because I don't want to adjust the timing in there. Um, so we're going to clean it all up, um, use some brake cleaner, then blow out all the holes with some air. Um, we're going to go get some new steel bolts, preferably Allen key heads. So I haven't got a lot of room in there. So I've put a torch down in here so you can try and see what I'm talking about. So up in there is the, is the bolt holes in the top of there. 
is quite hard to see. It's even it's even harder to work on. Um, I've actually took the you can probably tell I've taken the supercharger belt off there because that's the supercharger top of the top of the supercharger pulley. Um, it makes it a little bit more easy to get in there with a supercharger belt. You've got no hope of getting in there at all. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to get some steel bolts in there. So I'm going to use some JB weld and glue them in there like a like a like a with a with a medium compound. I don't want to actually put the like the strongest JB weld I've got because I'll never get it undone again. But also what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the heads on them and then wire lock them together to stop these things coming undone again. Right, we're waiting for some bolts to come in because I've actually ordered them. I didn't have them in stock. So while we're doing that, we're actually going to look at the brakes. Uh, on the monster truck, it's unusual. It's only got one brake on the back, which is there, and one brake on the front, which is in the same place. So the front and back axle on the monster truck are identical. The only difference, in my monster truck, I've got a locked rear axle, and then it's open in the front. Um, some people have it open in the rear and open in the front, and a lot of the monster jam trucks actually have it locked front and rear, so they have a Detroit locker in the axle. So as you can see on the disc, the disc should be completely shiny and nice and smooth. And as I pull the wheel backwards and forwards, if I turn it, it's really quite stiff at the moment. You can see that this piece here looks completely different. So that's actually a high spot on the brake rotor itself. So if you look all the way, all the way around the rest of it, it's all nice and smooth. So to do this, I've actually had to jack the monster truck up completely because it is four wheel drive. And so we've gone all the way around the rotation and then we back to the high spot again. So what that does is it actually rattles the brake pads. So when you go and put your foot on it, you can actually feel that vibration. So what we've got to do now, we've got to take all the guards off. We've got to undo the prop shaft guards, the prop shaft guard cover, take the prop shaft off, take the caliper off. Um, and then we actually have to undo the prop shaft flange where it bolts in the back of the diff because this is actually on the back of the flange. So here it is all disassembled. So as you can see, that's the flange that actually goes onto the diff. There's the prop shaft that actually bolts onto the flange and the brake disc actually sits behind the flange. You can actually see where the flange pattern, where this pattern around the outside of the disc goes over the top of the brake, brake disc. Now, you're gonna, some people in America call that a brake rotor. In the UK, we call it a brake disc. Um, they're in the right and the wrong. It, it's it's quite funny, really, what people call different parts of cars. So like, um, we have a, a bonnet and they have a hood in America. We have a boot lid and you have a trunk in America. So yeah, it's, it's quite funny. When I try to order parts from America, I call it completely different to some parts. And I, I, I deal a lot with Pablo from Racesource and sometimes I have to send a picture of the part I want because I call it something completely different and he hasn't got a clue what it is. Okay, so the brake rotors are now on the bench and you can see the difference. I've got a brand new one and the one that's just come off and you can see where the high spot in the other disc is. So that's where the vibration was coming from. We could still drive the truck. I could, just, I could tell that one of the brake discs was starting to warp. I do carry spare ones with me. Um, it's just easier to change them in the workshop because if we go, need to put anything through, we've got a nice parts washer so we can get everything nice back and clean. But if we're at a show and we break a brake disc, that's not a big deal. We just get in the trailer and get a new one out and fit it. It takes about 20 minutes to fit the brake disc. The only problem is they're really hot when they come off because we've just been using them. Okay, so there you go. Brake disc all fitted back in there. If you wonder what that funny noise is in the background, it is absolutely teeming with rain outside. So yeah, so don't go out in the rain. Um, yeah, quick tip for you though, if you ever do any work on your brake discs or uh, you've ever had your caliper off, especially on a, like a car or a motorbike, what happens is the brake pads will go back. So when you get back into your vehicle, pump the brake pedal or pull the brake lever and bring those brake pads right the way up. 
to the sides of the disc. Otherwise, what happens first time you go out, first time you put your foot on the brakes, the pedal will go all the way to the floor and you will not be stopping. So make sure when you've been doing any work on brakes is to pump the brake pedal or pull the brake lever and get those pads right in contact with the disc.